few weeks, so the title, I titled this message Inside Out. Um, and, and today I really want to talk to you about the interior design, the interior design. Um, if we don't watch out, we'll, we'll let our lives get out of control, okay? We'll let our lives get out of control. We'll, we'll let our emotions, our perceptions, our desires begin to control our lives. And, and what happens is Satan wants to hijack your emotions, well, amen. Praise the Lord. I'd bring my own encouragement today. He wants to hijack your emotions. So listen, it's up to you and I to get control of our soul. We have to get control of our soul. You know, you know over in, Psalm, or in Proverbs 25, 28, it says, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. The Message Bible says a person without self-control Proverbs 25, 28, a person without self-control is like a house with its doors and windows knocked out. See, if we don't learn to get control of our soul, we'll never be able to walk in faith. Our relationships will be ruined. Our marriages will be in shambles. Come on now. It could cost you your job. I mean, the soul is a very important part. And it's up, it's, it's up to me, it's up to you, it's up to all of us to get control of our soul. See, emotions are a gift. They're a gift from God. God is emotional. We have God, we have God laughing, right? We see Jesus weeping. We have scripture about the Spirit of God being grieved. These are emotions. And emotions are okay. But they're never to dictate my life. Come on now, are you with me? They're never to dictate my life. Amen. Amen. Emotions are a gift. Amen. So what's the goal? You say, well, Pastor, what is the goal? This is the goal. The goal, the goal is a spirit-led and spirit and being spirit-controlled. That's the goal. The goal of my life is to be spirit-led and spirit controlled. Can I get a good amen? amen? What is the goal? To be spirit led and what? Spirit controlled. Amen. What's missing today in this culture? Let me tell you what's missing in our culture today. Self control. You ever notice this? The, the, the fruit of the spirit, right? The fruit of the spirit. Those nine fruit. Correct? Guess what? What's at the beginning? Love. What's at the end? So the book ends to the fruit is love and self-control. So in order for us to really to demonstrate all of the fruit of the Spirit, we need to have love and we have to have what? Self-control. There must be something in our lives. Listen to me now. There must be something in us that if the Bible, Jesus said, deny yourself, right? He said, he said, if you want to come after me, you need to deny yourself, pick up the cross, and what? Follow me. So there has to be, i got to learn to deny myself. Oh, come on now. And then this is not popular. I get it. Not popular. So what's missing? It's, it's, it's self-control. Listen, sin is pleasurable. Sin is pleasurable if it wasn't pleasurable nobody would ever want to sin come on now sin is what it's pleasurable for a season for a time but it always leads to destruction every sin is emotional Sin is emotional. How does, how, listen, how, how, how can you go and blow your top and, 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 and run your mouth or whatever, right, without first getting what? Angry. Anger is a, an emotion. Come on now. So every sin is emotional. So if I learn to control my emotions... I learned to control my life. 
Now, listen to me now. Emotions are a gift. Therefore, they have to be steward. See, God, listen. Okay, uh, we had some ribs last night, and they were excellent. They were excellent ribs. They really were. They were great. But listen, I could, I could eat that, eat those ribs without any type of sauce or rub on them, right? And it would still been the substance. I would have still got the substance of it. I still would have been fueled. I still would have had it. But it, something better when, when, when the ribs were rubbed down, right, and had the barbecue sauce on it. See, that's what emotions are. Emotions are the spice of life. Emotions are good. They're not, they're not the substance, but they sure add a lot to our lives. They're real, but not reliable. They're a good gauge, but not a good guide. Now, we're all emotional in here. Look at your neighbor and say, you're emotional. Yeah. Some of you more than others. (laughs) It's the truth. We have emotions. So this is just like that video. There's a world, there's a world that's going on on the inside of you. Do you understand that you you talk more to you than you do to anybody? I use this all the time in, in biblical counseling and especially marriage premarital readiness counseling. We talk about, man, your 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 thoughts. Hey, listen, if you've already t- planned out how you're going to say it to you, you've already played it against Sam, and you've played it against Sam, and I'm going to give him peace of my mind, and you've played it all the way, all the, and all of a sudden you get home, and there's Bubba right in front of you. You better watch. Because, see, if you play it in your mind, you talk more to you than you do anybody. So the conversation on the inside of you has to be right. Oh, come on now. In order for it to be right on the outside. If you're offended all the time, you'll have the lens of offense on everything that someone... It's it's an internal issue. It's an internal internal thing. It's it's what's going on internally. It's the world that's on the inside of you that's dictating the world on the outside. That's a good word. Are you listening to what I'm saying? What's going on inside of you is dictating what's going on on the outside. Man, if you're dealing with anger and you have anger issues and you have explosive anger, you need to learn to get control of your soul. Listen, why do people have affairs? Why do people have affairs on their spouse? Emotions that have run amok. And listen, if you, let, if you listen to that stuff enough, you'll be convinced that that's the way it should be. People don't fall out of love. No. Love is a commitment. The day in April the 26th, 1997, when I made my vows to my wife, I made a vow to her. We stood and we made vows to one another. It doesn't matter what I feel. Because, see, feelings will come and go. You may wake up today and feel like you love somebody. You'll wake up tomorrow and don't feel like you love someone. But, you're, listen, your feelings have nothing to do with it. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. See, you're letting your emotions run your life. And it will get you in divorce situations, break your home up. Oh, come on now. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching really good. But this is what, well, I don't feel. I don't feel. I just don't feel. You need to get your feel in place. Because if you go by your feelings, you won't even be in church. <laughs> come on now. You won't even be in church if you feel. Oh, about worship. How about worship? Well, I don't feel like worshiping today. I don't feel like praising today. When does your feelings have anything to do with it? See, what if you would just start out and do it and be obedient? Maybe your, your feelings will always follow. Yeah, I've, I've preached that. I've talked about that in marital counseling before. Yep, what you, what you got? You got? You got all of a sudden they put their, people put their feelings above their, or before their faith. See, the faith is the, the engine. The feelings are the caboose. See, if you get that switched around and you put the feelings as the engine and your faith as the caboose, you're going off the rail quickly. But if you let your faith, let your faith pull you, you let your faith, your feelings will follow your faith. Feelings will come around, just like with marriage. Why am I on marriage? Listen to me now. 
You ever heard that? Well, the seven-year itch. The seven-year itch. Well, what it is, what happens is that around the seventh, but between five to seven years into a marriage, feelings start to leave. But if you just, if you just stay with your commitment and your vow, guess what will happen? The feelings will come back around. You can't walk by your feelings. The Bible is full of it. It tells us we walk by faith and not by sight. People are getting destroyed because of their feelings. Got to put it in its place. You got to put it in its place. Let your faith operate. Go to 3 John. You guys all right? That was an introduction. 3 John. Little John, little John, one chapter in little John, little John, one chapter, verse 2. Look what it says. Beloved, anybody beloved in here? I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as as your what? Soul prospers. Your interior world is going to dictate the outer world. Am I making sense to you? He said, I want you to prosper. Now, everybody always goes to money. Prosper, prosperity. Get your mind off of the money a minute. You know what? You can have all the money in the world and not be prospering. You can have all the money in the world and be pro- not prospering in your soul. How many of you know you're a pro- if you Listen here. You, you, your marriage is successful. Guess what? You're prospering. Your kids, are, your kids are successful. Prospering. Come on now. You got a job today. You're working. You're prospering. It's more than just money. The word prosper actually means to help on a journey. That's what it means. To help on a journey or to be successful in a journey. He said the, the, the way that you define prosperity is having success in your life. And success is defined many different ways. But you'll never be successful until the Bible Bible says is unless your soul is successful. Unless your inner world is successful. Your inner world is determining your outer world. My inner world, what's going on on the inside of me? Amen. The soul of man. What is the soul of man? The soul of man is the mind, the will, the emotions. This is what the this is how we are a three part being. We are a spirit, a soul. We are a spirit that lives in a body that possesses soul, spirit, soul, and body. And God, let's talk about the interior design of you. God cares about every part of your life. <clears throat> God cares about every single portion of your life. He cares. Look what he says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 up on the screen. Look what he says here. He says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify. You see that word sanctify? It, it just means to set apart for God. To set apart for a divine purpose. To set apart for, 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 for God's use. That's what the word sanctify means. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you what? Completely. This is interesting. Completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So God, he wants every part of you to be set apart for him. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. See, the word peace here, it's the Greek word irene. And it means to be put broken pieces back together. This is what the word peace means. It means to bring harmony or to bring broken pieces and put them back to a place of wholeness. It's like something that's shattered and broken and God puts it back to the place where it's whole. He said he wants the, the fall affected us in every area of our lives. Every area. We were affected spiritually. We were affected soullessly. We was affected in our body. Come on now. 
That's why the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53 that Jesus came and the Bible says that uh, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. And he said, listen, he not only done that, he said, listen, I want to go and I want to heal your body. In Isaiah 53, he talks about the healing of your body. He talks about the soul of man. He said, he said the chastisement of, my, of, of your peace was upon him. Someone turn in and help me out. Start that. Just start that scripture for me, Adam. Isaiah 53. Start it out for me. Just, it, it, I just went blank on it. Just help me find it real quick. Just start it out. Verse 4. See if I can have a keyword sometimes. That'll help me. I was preaching last night. Surely he hath borne our iniquities and carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. For he was wounded for our transgressions. That's your sin. Spirit. He was bruised for your iniquities, our sin again, the acts of sin and the nature of sin. Bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of for what? The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. So we see here spirit, soul, and body. Jesus came to redeem us in every area. He comes to bring you wholeness in your mind. In my mind. He wants wholeness in me in every area. This is your interior design. I want you to realize today this one thing, that there's something going on inside of your brain, inside of your mind, inside of your mind. There's something going on on the inside of you that you and I have to learn to control. And if it doesn't, we are going to be really having a hard time walking in the ways of the Spirit. Amen. Are you guys with me here? You'll, t- you'll get yourself talked out. That your emotions will talk you out of everything. It will walk you out. It will take, take you right out of your destiny. Hmm. So God has given us the right to make choices with our hearts, with our, with our minds, with our souls. Jesus said, let, in John 14, 1, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Let not. That's a permissive word. That's a permissive word. You know, the biggest deception, listen, this is the biggest deception the enemy gives. This is it. You ready? You ready? I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. Well, I don't feel like praying. Jesus said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. If you let your, your emotions keep you in bed, when it's prayer morning, leaders, keep you in bed see we don't, we've got our emotions ruling our lives and not the spirit come on now don't get quiet on me because I'm helping you out because we're all here it's important that we understand if you don't watch that it'll walk you right into places you don't want to be come on now so your soul the soul is the connector to your body, to your life. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says this. It says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the vision of what? Soul and what? Spirit and joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Now, we could talk about this scripture a long time, but I want you to see something here. That you see here the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow. So we see spirit, soul, and body. The word of God helps to divide that. Now, what I want you to see actually right here, if you wouldn't care, you see the word soul and spirit? You see that? And then you take these two words, joints and marrow. Now, if you would hook in joint to soul and spirit to marrow, to mar- the marrow of the bone, it makes a whole lot of sense. Because inside the marrow is life. That's the place that blood is, the, the life, the life source where blood is made is in the marrow. See, it's in the spirit is where the life of God is at. When you get born again, the spirit of God comes inside of your spirit, in here, in your, in your, in, inside of you, and he gives life to you. He that hath the son hath life. He that hath not, hath not the son does not have life. The life of God is in your spirit. But the connector is the joint. A joint connects. So the way you get the life of God out of your spirit when you get born again is by your soul. Am I making sense to you guys? Am 
life of God. You're born again. Jesus lives in there. The life of God is in there. But it's what I do right here with my soul that will determine what happens in my body. Amen. You say, well, pastor, you got this all under control? Oh, no. But he's still working on me. I'm not where I used to be. I'm not where I'm going to be. But I'm in the process. But I'm farther along than I ever have been. Amen. Are you guys with me? Everything that matters starts with the inside of you. So the question today for you is this. How's your soul? That's all I'm asking. This is the, the thing I want you to take out of this room. How's your soul today? How's your soul today? When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. I'm asking a question today. How is it with your soul? Come on, Rock. You guys understand this. You got desires, right? But they're desires. They're not who you are. See, we think emotions defines who we are. Well, I'm depressed. Well, hold on. You may feel depressed. I'm not saying that. I'm not making light of any of that. But at the end of the day, it's not who you are. It's not the one that, it's, it's not the ruler unless you let it. it, 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 it that's, that's the key. Well, I got a desire. I want to do this. Yeah, I understand that. I get it. But we have to be people that's not serving our belly. What do you mean belly? The word belly in the scripture means emotions and feelings. Our God is not our belly. Am I making sense to you? See, this is the way you once were. Oh, we're going we're gonna to veer off. Let me go to I just, Ephesians 2. Let's go over here real quick. I, just, I need to show you this. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Let's go over here. I want to show you this. Got your Bible or your phone or whatever. I want you to see it. S- see, see, you're in a war. And, 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 and the flesh is waging war or, or it's waging war against your soul. I want to show you this as we move forward over the weeks to come. But it's important that we understand. See, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, it says this, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. He said, before you knew Jesus, you were dead in your trespasses and sin. You were dead, D-E-A-D. It means you, you had no life in you. Now look what it says. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves, we all once, before we knew Jesus, conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. That word wrath there, it's, it's the word Greek word orge, and it means passion. It means people that are being ruled by their emotions. This is the way you operated your life. You were ruled by what you felt. Well, hey, Mary Ann, see if you can find the message translation of verse 3. Look at what it says here in verse 3 in the Message Bible. If you can do that real quick for me. Uh, yeah, uh, go up. I'm sorry, go up. Uh, go up again. Yeah, go up again. Okay, it, was so, it wasn't so long ago that you were mired in that old stagnant life of sin. So you let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. Because why? Their God's their belly. Am I making sense to you guys? Let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then excelled the disobedience. We all did it, all of us. Next verse. Doing what we felt like doing. When we felt like doing it, all of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with the whole lot of us. Well, I'm glad for his love. Instead, immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives, and you could just read on from there. 
and made us alive in Christ. See, that's the way we once operated. Doing what we felt, living like we wanted to live, doing whatever we wanted to do with no restraint. That's the way you were before you were born again. But aren't you glad for Jesus? Now you can't claim the devil made me do it. See, that's what grace is all about, man. I'm just, listen, that's what grace is all about. Everybody thinks grace is about me being able to do whatever I want to do. When grace is actually the opposite, it's actually there to give you power to say no to sin. To say no to those negative emotions. To say no to, to, to bursting out in anger. and Saying no from going out on my wife. That's what grace is for. God's given you his supernatural power for that reason. Amen. See, we're all dealing with emotions in here. Everybody. Because we're emotional people. Because we're made in the image of God. And God's emotional. But emotions are a gift. They're the spice, not the substance. Right? It's good to have emotions. But they are never to be the thing that's ruling and reigning. I'm I'm making sense to you. So so I, I I need you to understand it today. I want us to become more intentional at looking at our lives. Your, you know, your health has been linked to your soul. Do you know that? I would just in- encourage you to do some, de- just do some research about your, your soul affects lots of things about your life. Health-wise. Neuro- neuroscientists have pr- has proven that your bl- brain is neuroplastic. Neuroplasticity, neuroplastic, which means it's moldable. It's, it's, it, it can be shaped and it changes. And they're linking it to the mind or the thought patterns. Over in Proverbs, as a man thinketh, so is he. You can change your life by controlling the soul. Man, I'm telling you, relationships are affected by your soul. Your business will be affected by your soul. (laughs) Our church will be affected by our souls. Our marriages are linked to our soul. Our faith is linked to our soul. As a man thinketh, so is he. We will become the sum total of our thinking. And it's the truth. Amen. Now go with me real quick to Romans chapter 12. I'm going to give you a few things today. Praise God. Amen. You'll never even be able to operate in the kingdom of God unless you change the way you think. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, metanoia, change the way you think. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We, you guys know these scriptures, but I want you to see them again. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. By the renewing of your what? Mind. So that you can prove, demonstrate, display what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. We'll never be able to display the will of God unless our minds are transformed. See, when you got born again, again, your spirit got automatically changed, but your mind didn't. So it's up to us to have a mind transformation. The word transformation here is the Greek word metamorpho. It it means we get the word metamorphosis from it. It means change from the inside out. That's what it means. It's like a caterpillar going inside of a cocoon, and what's going on on the inside, there's something beautiful. A caterpillar is being made into a beautiful butterfly. This is that word metamorphosis, that that change is happening to that caterpillar. I know it's simple. I know we've heard this before. But we need to understand, if we're going to prove out, display, and demonstrate the will of God for our lives and walk in his destiny, I have to have a transformed mind. 
I have to have a transformed mind. And it starts from the inside out. This is inside out. See this word right here. You see this word be transferred by the renew. You see that word renew? Anybody like restoring anything? I know Melody, she'll, she restores stuff, right? Or maybe like an old car that's in a, sitting in a, uh, a, a, a maybe a, a, an old uh, shed or a barn, right? And it's got rust on it and it's got stuff. See, that word renew means to, to restore back to its original design, re, uh, original look. So, what it, let's think about Adam a second. Think about Adam. What would it look like for Adam? He was made perfect. So what did it look like for him? Right? Just think about that a second. That's what the Bible's trying to get us. It's trying to get us back to the garden. Trying to get us back to the place of, of we have God thinking and, and, and that we think like God would think and we act like God would think. That's where the that's the goal. But it's not going to happen unless we have mind transformation. So in order for me, Josh, in order for me to go to where I need to go as a Christian, I, that's, why the, that's why when you come to an altar, you give your heart to Jesus, it's just the starting line for you. It's not the finish line. The work now is starting. The work's starting now. <laughs> what are you guys here this morning for? That's exactly right. You want to be what? Transformed. What will you mark out to be here at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning to come listen to some guy jabber? What are you doing that for? Well, we're doing it for souls, that's right. But you can't win souls unless you have a transformed mind. Because the Bible says he that wins souls is wise. That's in Proverbs. He that wins souls is wise. See, you can't, you can't even win souls if you don't have a renewed mind. How can you win souls when you act just like the world that you're coming out? Oh, come on, somebody. I heard the other day, it was crazy. This is the craziness of what, what's going on in, in America's churches. And listen, I'm not here to say that I, I, I believe, man, in liberty. Uh, I believe that there is liberty in the body of Christ and with Jesus. I understand that. But I, I actually read an article the other day where a church is opening up a brewery and going to have church inside of a brewery. That way they can drink while the pastor's preaching. And the pastor said this. I read the article. He said this. It says, uh, he said, I, I preach a little better with a couple in me. I read it. My own eyes. Listen, I believe in grace. You say, well, can you drink? Go to heaven. Yeah, you can do that. See, I had a bad, see, I had bad experiences. Didn't we, Billy? Ain't much good in that stuff. But I'm telling you one thing. When a preacher stands up and says in a pulpit, I don't care who you are. I'm not here to, to cast judgment. I'm telling you something. When a preacher stands, I, I preach a little better with a couple more in me. He's not leaning on anything but his own self-will. That's it. What I'm trying to say to you is this. If you don't have a transformed, renewed mind, we can't prove out the will of God in the earth. We can't. Come on, don't get mad at me. Don't tighten up now. I'm just trying to give you some truth today. This is how far we've gone. I believe in grace, man. I do. I believe that God is, you're all on a journey and everybody's at different spots. I get that. But I'm telling you something. Listen, we can't do what we're called to do unless we're having a transformed mind. Amen. Now, now in Romans chapter 12, I'm going to bring you just a few things here, and then we're going to we'll let you get out of here. Look here. Romans 12 in the Message Bible. Let's read this in the Message Bible. And I want to take a few points out of this set of scriptures. You got it there in the Message Bible? You got it? Oh, turn around. Sorry, I need to turn around. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg you in the view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies presenting all of your members and faculties as a living sacrifice. What if we wake up tomorrow morning and do that right there? I'm presenting my whole life to you. Just wake up tomorrow. Lord, tomorrow, I'm waking up today. Today, my life is yours. Holy, devoted, and consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Verse 2. Actually, that's in the Amplified, but that's really good. 
That's really good. I, I preach off of that. <laughs> that wasn't the message Bible, but let's find the message Bible. Well, let's just, let's just read this. Maybe it's something the Lord's trying to do. And do not be conformed to this world. This age fashioned after adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitudes, so that you may prove for yourself what is the good, acceptable, perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. That's the Amplified. That's pretty good. I need the message Bible. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it. Click. Without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the what? Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of what? Immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Isn't that good? A few things here I want you to understand. There's a few things. How am I going to start walking this way? How am I going to do it? Number one, don't fit in without thinking. That's what he says. Back here to the message there. Uh, I think it's there. It's yeah. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it. And then the next verse, the next part says, without even what? Thinking. This is the key, church. Be aware of your soul. How are we going to start this thing? I need to start being aware of the dudes that's on the inside of me pushing the buttons. Right? I, I need to be aware of this. Don't become so well adjusted you just fit in without even what? Thinking. Without even thinking about it. Stay, stay aware of what's going on. Stay aware of yourself. Do, 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 a, do a head to toe, just a quick scan. What's going on in your soul? Amen. Because if you'll get it, if you'll harness your emotions, if you'll harness this, if you'll, if you'll start paying attention, you'll start harnessing your emotions. Don't fit into it without even thinking what you say, what you're saying. He, he said, I gotta pay attention. Pay attention to this. Pay attention. I tell you what, go with me to James chapter one. Look, we're gonna go back here to we're gonna go back there to that part again. But look what it says in James 1. Verse. Can I can I get a good amen here, real quick? All right, verse 18, it says this. Of his own will, you turn in there, just like I'll let you to James 1:18. Of his own will, he, capitalization there, right? He brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be the kind of first fruits of his cre creatures. He's talking about you being born again. He's talking about you being born again by the word of truth. You heard the truth. The truth came and made you free. And you've been born of his own will, he brought you out. The word there, the actual King James says begat you. The word begat actually means to give birth to you. He gave birth to you through the word of truth. He's talking about you being born again, saved. Next scripture. So then, my beloved brethren. Got any brethren in this room? Let every man, every woman, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Look what it says, that it says right here. For the wrath of man does not produce God's way of doing things. He's telling you, get control of your soul. Be quick to hear, so to speak, so to read. He said, he said, get control of your soul. Get control of who you are. Because see, this wrath is not going to do, do any good for you. This wrath is not going to actually produce God's way of doing things in your life. Man, isn't that good? He said, get control of this thing, man. Look what it says in the next verse. Therefore... This is my responsibility. No one's going to do it for you. Therefore, you lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to what? Save your what? It's talking about your mind, will, and your emotions. What's going to heal your soul? By receiving truth in your heart taking control of your soul, renewing your mind, and letting that seed germinate and become the thing that's greater in you.
But it won't happen if I don't think about it. Don't become so well adjusted to the culture that you just fit in without what? Thinking about it. The number two. There's three things here. Number two. So first thing I've got to, I got to, don't fit in without thinking, right? You got to get control. Think about what you're thinking about. Number two, fix your attention on God. That's what he says in, in, back over there in the Message Bible again. There in that second part of that verse. Without even thinking, instead, fix your attention what? On God. Second thing I'm going to do is fix my attention on God. Your mind needs renewed. Everybody's got stinking thinking. Everybody. Everybody's got stinking thinking. So it's up to me to do something with my stinking thinking. That's why when you get born again, you, man, you, why do you still want to cuss? Because your mind's not been renewed yet. Now, now when the Spirit of God comes inside of you, they're, they're, it touches you. It touches you. But you hit your, hit, hit your, hit your, you know, you hit your uh, nail with a hammer. You'll find out real quick what's in your heart. Right? Why, why is it that 66, let me, why is it that 66% of the Christian men coming into the church are, are watching pornography and looking at pornography on a regular basis? Their souls aren't controlled. They're spending way too much time not renewing their mind. Come on now. What's going on? Come on now. Mm, I don't want to go there. I'm just saying, can, can I? How are we in here? I think we can be candid. I mean, truthfully, I mean, let's just be honest in our in our in our in our marriages. You know, you know, church. Listen, uh, our bodies don't even belong to us. Listen, when you start hearing about sixty-six percent of men, it's it's a big problem. It's a huge problem, and it's more than just one thing. But it's a reflection of the marriage. I'm asking a question. What's going on inside the marriage bed? Because if you're being driven by your emotions all the time, now listen, this is both ways. But if you're all the time being driven by your emotions all the time, your sex life is going to be terrible. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't shut me down because I'm preaching really good. I'm, I mean, you ought to be, I mean, this is okay, right? We need to be talking about this kind of stuff. Now, that's the, that's the term about different, different people, different, all that stuff is different for everybody. But I'm telling you this, is that, listen, if it's all the time based on your feelings, it's, this thing is going to go haywire real quick. I'm, not help, I'm just pastoring, just trying to help you. Mm -hmm. So, I need to understand this. I, I, I need to... I need, to, I, I, I need to understand to fix my attention on God and find out what he says and keep, keep myself focused. How does that happen? How do I fix my attention on God? Well, I mean, it's called the word of God. It's called prayer. It's called fellowship. It's called journey groups. It, it, it's, called, it's called attending church. It, it's called it, all kinds of ways. You can, it's called turning on, uh, turning on some worship music. Come on. Won't you turn off 97.5 and start listening to something that will feed you? Not about how your dog got killed and how this. And you play it backwards, you get it all back. <laughs> lost your boat. Lost your wife, and I'm really going to miss that boat. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm saying, or, or whatever, 102.7 or whatever. I, listen, I'm not trying to bring people under the law. I'm just trying to tell you whatever you fix your attention on is what you're going to have. Yes. And if you want yourself, come on, to grow and develop and because, because your mind needs to be transformed, it's up for me and you to make sure we're providing an environment for that to happen in. You say, well, you know what? Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep doing it. It'll start changing, man. Come on. Oh, I tell you. You guys all right? 
At James 1.21, it says, receive the implanted word that will save your souls. Implanted, germinating word. It's a germinating, it's a germinating seed. It, actually, I, I love this. I don't want to bore you. I know I'm a geek. I get that. But I, look, I start looking up words and scriptures and stuff, and I'm just trying to find it fascinating because the word germinate, listen to this now, where he says, uh, you got that James 121 real quick. Let me just show you this. This is very interesting. Uh, there, lay aside all fields and no further witness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. The word implanted means impregnated, and it also means germinated. Now, this is what it actually means. It's a seed that comes from another source. You, you get that, did you? It's a seed that comes from another. So this implanted word, it's coming from a different store. It's coming from heaven. And it's trying to change your mind to think like what? Heaven. Jesus said on earth as it is in what? Heaven. How's that going to happen? By thoughts coming and transforming. God transforming our thoughts. And this, this word implanted and germinating and, and, and growing and taking over your, your mind. It'll drive out that stuff, man. The next thing you know, you'll start driving out that cussing. You'll start driving out that desire for alcohol. You'll start driving out that desire for another woman. You'll start driving out that desires. Or another man. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Fix your attention on God. And the last and final thing is this. Look what he says back in the Message Bible. That second part of that verse. Don't fit in without thinking. Fix your attention on God. Be changed from the inside out. out, out inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you. And respond. Listen to me now. Leave that up there. Readily recognize what he wants from you. And respond. The third thing is recognize what he wants. And respond. This is the deal. Listen to me now. Give me five minutes. I'm done. You're in a battle. And it's a battle for your soul. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 up on the screen, verses 3 through 5 says this. For, what, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or worldly, but mighty in God for the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Casting down arguments, thoughts. Ideas and suggestions. Casting down thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. And everything, high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing what? Every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I got to know what he wants. And you're going to have a decision to make. And the Bible says we can take every thought captive. Every thought. That means we have the ability to step outside of ourselves and examine what we're thinking about. And it's up for you and I to know what he wants, recognize it, take the thought. That's not God thought. And just because you have a thought doesn't mean that you, that make, listen, just because you have a thought doesn't mean that it makes you evil. Just because you have a thought doesn't mean you sinned. It's when you dwell on that thought. It's when you go and begin to act on that thought that becomes sin. He said, take every thought captive. I'm ready to respond. And my response comes from a thought. Every action begins with a thought. I got to be ready. I got to know what he wants. That way when the thought comes, it's not God. I can take it captive. I can take it captive and say, that's not what God says. And listen, this is where you have to hone yourself because things, it's not always black. It don't look always black and white. Because see, well, you have a right. Don't you know what they've done to you? You don't need to forgive them. They've hurt you. They deserve to be hurt. 
Now that kind of sounds, well, yeah, that's, uh, that's right. They did hear, hurt me. Yeah, I, right? But if you don't watch out, man, you'll let your emotions take control. And it will steal from you from God's best for your life. Amen. Amen. You guys getting this? You guys are all right, right? The mind is the battlefield. Is this why he's giving you the Holy Spirit? I'm done. Listen. That's why they give you the Holy Spirit. Why, why is the Holy Spirit come? Why is the Holy Spirit in you? He's there to help you. He's there to lead you. He's there to guide you. He's there to direct you. He's there to help you. And the Bible says in John 16 that the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he's going to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. He convicts the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Jesus said it like this. I'm going to, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He's going to convince you of righteousness or my way of doing things because I'm no longer going to be with you. So he said the Holy Spirit's going to help you understand what the model is. He said the Holy Spirit's going to come and help you. I, you don't have me in front of you. You don't have me right here in front of you anymore and to see the model and how I would do this. But the Holy Spirit said you're going to show you what the right thing to do is. That's the Holy Spirit. He's living in you. Amen. Close your Bible, I'm done. No, I'm not. I'm done. Tammy, let's play. I want to show you two scriptures, I'm done, I promise. Galatians 5, I'm going to amplify it real quick here, I want to show you, and then we'll, we'll close it, we can get out of here. Galatians 5, I think, was it 16? Yeah, it's on the screen, sorry. But I say, walk and live what? Habitually. How's the habit start? They say you can, you can get a habit in what? How many days? Seven? 21? Well, I was, I was looking for some research, Joe. I was, I was waiting. Some of, I was waiting for Joe to come for the new, new research. They say 21 days, you can start a habit. So you've got to train yourself. I know I've said this many times, but even professionals go back to the T. All the time. They go back. Same stuff over. You say, well, I've heard this message before. We're just training. Because I want it to become automatic. I don't have to think about it. So, but I say walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled with, and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of human nature without God. How are we going to not let our emotions take control of us? By habitually being what? Controlled by the Holy Spirit. If not, we'll let our emotions run wild. Man, are you critical? Do you have a lot of criticism in your life? Are you all the time grumpy? Are you all the time snapping at your husband or at your wife? Because you come home and had a bad day? You know what we just done? We've let our emotions rule us. Many homes are in disarray. Oh, they live together. Because there's too much emotion running the home. What well, says in verse 25, I'm done. If we live by the Holy Spirit, but us also walk by the Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward walking in line, our conduct controlled by the Spirit. Amen. So how do I'm going to do this? How am I going to do this? Don't fit in without thinking. Start paying attention to your soul. Fix your attention on God. Fix your attention on Him. Renew your mind with the Scripture and with worship and prayer and, and form your life, man. I think the message, I think I gave you the message too, didn't I, Nat? I think. Maybe. In verse, I don't know, maybe I didn't. I don't know. If it doesn't fit inside of a God-shaped life, get rid of it. Amen. If it doesn't live, if it doesn't do that, amen. I think it's back on uh, verse 20, uh, verse, verse 16, I think. I may be just going off my memory. Nope, that's not it. Never mind. 
There's something, it says it somewhere in there. Just making sure, man, keeping your life guided by the Spirit. Now, next week, we'll go a little step farther. We'll talk about don't second your emotions. Don't second your emotions. They're looking for agreement. Who are you going to agree with? The Spirit? Or are you going to agree with the guy pushing the button back there? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity today to be able to preach the word, be able to help, instruct people. Lord, it's my desire. I pray that this morning. Something will come alive in our hearts today, God, as the word of God's being preached. I thank you, Lord, today that you've given us the Holy Spirit. You've given us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is there to help us, to guide us. And that we would lead a God-shaped life. A God-shaped life. A life that is formed by Christ. That's the desire. That's why we're on the earth, is to be a representation of you. We're made in your image, and therefore we're image bearers. And our call, God, is to have a relationship with you and to represent you to the world. But Lord, it will never happen if we're ruled by our emotions. We're emotional people. We're made in your image. You've given us emotions. What would life be without emotions? What would life be without joy? What would life be without love? What would life be without happiness? What would life be? What would life be like, Lord, if we we didn't have anger towards injustice? To right wrong. be angry at the enemy the adversary his work Jesus you were full of life and you had emotions help us to be able to manage and steward our emotions and put them in their proper place I pray that for everybody in this room and we'll walk out of here today yep I'm not going to just fit into the culture without just thinking. I'm going to think about what I'm thinking about. I'm going to think about my soul. Part of me that I can't see. And I'm going to gain and harness my emotions. I'm not going to be like a city with no walls. That the adversary can get in and cause damage and destruction and confusion. I'm going to fix my attention, God. This week, God, I pray that we'll all take some time to be with you. That you can change our hearts, change our lives from the inside out. As we read the scripture, read devotions, as we pray, turn on some worship music. As we enjoy time together as a church, as a family, help us to be transformed in our thinking. Lord, I thank you today that you've helped, you're helping us. The Spirit of God is helping us to wage war against the thoughts, the ideas, and suggestions that we'll know what you want and we'll be ready to respond and do what you've called us to. Lord, I pray today for every person this morning. I pray for myself. Help us to be who we've been called to be. In Jesus' name.